Okay, ladies and gentlemen, comment on your attempt one. May the Lord bless me. All right. STA2. What you are about to see is me summarize and dissect a game in which I am bottom tier. And my word, I do some fine, fine, fine work in a rather mediocre tank. I say rather mediocre, it's just not good. I guess that's what mediocre means, but the SDA 2, it, it feels pleasant nonetheless. In any scenario that you put it in, you feel like you have, at least have a decent chance of making it work. And that's how I'm feeling as I start off this battle in Ghost Town, making my way over to an opportunistic position that is specific to the Assault game mode for the most part, I would say. Although, is it? And it did, I'd have to look at the maps because I've forgotten. I don't want to really start this because I'm pressed for time. <laughs> I'm shit. In any case, my objective or my optimistic view is that I may be able to put some shots into people progressing up the north of the map. I will be honest with you, I was not expecting that. Um, have a bit of a gift for our team there, but I shan't complain. What I shall do is give you a brief overview of the capacities of the STA-2. Now, 55 km an hour top speed, that's okay. Feels flexible, feels nice. 23 in reverse, that's actually rather powerful. But hold up, hold up, we've got things to talk about. Let's look at this map. Oh, this juicy, juicy map. Okay, all right. We got a little kind of sexy little multi-level engagement going on here between the Yag Tiger and the Vuffle. So I'm liking that at this stage. By the way, if you want to learn more about multi-level engagements, which you need to do if you want to get better at the game, card up in the corner, I did a really, really damn good review of them. That would teach you a lot about how to recognize and exploit this game state. Now, at this point, I don't want to leave the Vuffle alone. I'm seeing that my team are kind of exploiting this area, but I see this connection, right, between the Yag Tiger and the Vuffle. And it's important to realize that in this situation, in the bottom tier tank, where I'm thinking, okay, maybe a Skoda T T50 or, or something else, a 122 TM is going to come up that flank. If it was just the Vuffle, I probably would abandon it. I, I'd press the numerical advantage that I think we might have on this side, and I'd be in here brawling with these guys. But the power position that that Yag Tiger's on supports the Waffentrager's position so heavily that I think there's many in actually going over here and trying to hold this flank because we've got that Yag Tiger on the high ground in long distance support. I think this Waffentrager is actually in a position that's worthwhile me when you're locating to defend in this bottom tier tank. So, putting the 55 kilometers now at top speed, who could use 20 in reverse, as I say, we're working with 240 alpha damage on this 90 millimeter gun, 212 millimeters of pen, and 275 with each high explosive anti tank on this Japanese medium tank here. It's gonna do us a lot of favors at long distance and against heavily armored flat surfaces. 45 millimeters of pen with HE with 320 alpha damage, nothing to speak of there. 650 horsepower, which is nice, giving us a 19.12 horsepower per ton, which feels rather pleasant, as does the 10 degrees of gun depression, as does not the 13 degrees of gun elevation, which is rather mediocre, it's not Manticore levels are bad, but it's around AMX 5120 territory, which is no good at all. Don't know if I've mentioned the 400 meters of base view range, which is not remarkable, but pleasant nonetheless. Now, this shot is one of those aggravating ones. Should have been a kill shot on your average roll, but it does let the Skoda get away. We take a shot from a batch at AP up on the high ground there, so it does tell us where he is. And now this moment right here is an incredibly important bit of the game, right? Incredibly important. I am going to move my bottom tier tank I would say about 150 meters. 
And that is incredibly important. Incredibly important. Now, let's talk about why, right? I was in this position in order to support this position. This position has now been lost and compromised. Therefore, we fall back to support the next greatest, most powerful position, right? And so that is there. I can't support this one here, but the enemy can solo engage me. They can come up there and pour far into me, keeping this guy out of the fight. That's one problem. The other problem, I'm on the lowest land available to me to support this area. I can't go on high ground because of the bat chat that shot me there. So if I want to obtain high ground to get better shots if they encroach on this Yak Tiger, where do I go? Well, there's a bit of high ground here that not only does it pull me out of this potential engagement? Not only does it hide me from here, not only does it allow me to get a better shot on any people potentially attacking this Yakko, uh, but it also adds another angle to the town. And what is in the town? Yes, only the mo one of the most inflexible TDs in the entire game, the good old T95 Doom Turtle. What do you do against the Doom Turtle? Well, you put one tank here, you put one tank here, and then you go, where are you going to look, you big American? Bitch. All right, so that is what we are going to do, and I'm going to get another, another cheeky uh, shot. Hit. Like, I mean, does that make up for the Skoda shot? I do not know. But as I say, not planning to engage with T95. But you can see, look at that T95. Look at the impact we can have on it. Now I'm not planning to do a load of damage here. My presence here, you can see how much better this position is for the overall arc, the scope of the game, than out there. And it's moving 150 meters. Yeah, Tiger, on his power position on the high ground there, taking out the scope of the T50. So I'm not so worried about defending that. Yeah, Tiger, now, I think even if the Batch had launched him, like, let's look at this mathematically, he's got 2,100 hit points. What? What can a Batchat do in a clip? 1,800. Six shields, 300 alpha damage per shield. So, yeah, Tiger, not really concerned about his life right now. So my focus dives on to the T95. Now, as we know, this is an assault game. Four minutes already elapsed. Six minutes left. We have to kill all of the enemy tanks, or we have to cap in order to win. Now, the Skoda asked me for help here, and I do plow forward because I think maybe we can exploit the T95, but that guy perching up behind is not good. So what I do instead is I pull back, and I'm pouring shots into the dry wheel of the T95, Purely in an effort to help my Skoda stay alive. Uh, he's, he's a one-shot there, and so I thought that by tracking the T95, I might be able to keep him in the game longer, because it looked like the T95 was going to pressure out the corner. Now my attention turns to this 430. Being cheeky, we're going to very carefully aim for the tracking shot there. <laughs> very ambitiously attempt to hide behind the... Whoa! But we do get another lovely tracking shot. We're gonna side scrape out here and keep him tracked. Wonderful contribution against a higher tier medium tank here. We can put another shot in and keep him pinned in place for the 1 4. Looking around, trying to get our bearings, trying to get our awareness up. We'll put ourselves in a position where we can be flexible to help out wherever an engagement is needed. I'm pokes around here right now because the Emil might well make a move on the Skoda. Right? Not only that, I can turn and engage multiple angles from this position. And you're going to see me in a minute having an opportunistic soiree or an opportunistic feathering at the Waffenträger. But then the Emil pops out from the depths of hell. And I'm looking, looking for a way to engage him. I don't want to pressure down here because of a potential long shot from the T95. But I hear fire going off and I know that this Emilia is going to want to exploit and avenge the health he just lost. And as soon as he commits fully onto that Scorpion, I know I can just plow forward 
and take him out up to 2400 damage that is 400 above the base dpm of this thing pretty much 2200 base dpm with eight rounds per minute of 240 alpha damage be able to plow our shots into a distracted batch out here well, these guys are engaging the Emil-1 and the Chinanifar does take the Emil-1 out. I'm not sure why the Batchat didn't move here. But this is getting very, very nasty. It wouldn't be nearly as nasty if the Tiger was make, making more of a contribution right now. But he's playing very passively at the back there. And now, I thought about completely disengaging down this street. You, you kind of saw me... Uh, act like I was going to be going this way and then fall back. I stayed here because against a T95, I can afford to be cheeky in situations like this because his flexibility is not going to allow him to snapshot me coming around a corner like might happen with a, a T30 or T124, U162B, e something like that in this situation. So right now, I know that we're pressured for time, three and a half minutes left, so I want to pressure if I can. I, I want to give my team knowledge and awareness of where the enemy tanks are because we really need to start closing out this game and we cannot afford to waste time. So I'm trying to stay in close enough proximity to these guys so that I can contribute. And now we're approaching probably the most dangerous state of the game um, because I'm, I'm trying to get awareness here on a one shot for the enemy tank that I'm attempting <laughs> to find and you can see what I'm doing here I'm not even exposing myself around a corner and the interesting thing is believe it or not STB one's armor profile 45 35 25 on the hull on the turret 70 60 35? 35. But its gun mantle is actually 212. 212 millimeters of spaced armor. That's. I mean, you're not going to be going hold down and bouncing a load of stuff in this tank. That's not what it does. But angled like this, knowing that about this tank, this is why I'm angling like this. Because on the off chance, on the off chance that the T95 puts a shot into my gun that way, right, there is a chance that that 212 millimeters of space down there could well actually bounce it at this angle. Not to mention moving my spottable point from the center of my tank to the right ups the chance of me getting my sixth sense going off, telling me that the T95 is waiting there at that corner for me to poke out now. Yeah, Tigers been caught in a situation that shouldn't be too troublesome for him. The T95 will take him apart, but T95's DPM isn't that fantastic, so will happen slowly. That, however, is a seriously bigger issue. SU-101 up his ass, right? And that is very problematic because I believe that guy has the 100mm gun, which is just overflowing with DPM on that tier 8. And this is a very important engagement. You can see, bef before I was even back around the corner, I was turning. Because again, this is a factual situation. It is factually correct that the correct play for this T95 is to come and kill me. Right? I'm a one shot, I'm far away from any cover, he can come around and pressure me. And were, were it not for the fact that I knew that as I was going into this engagement, he likely would have killed me. A lot of other players would have died here. And that's why the awareness is so important going into the engagement, because I was already running as soon as he made the decision to turn and engage me. Unfortunately, oh, SU-101 picks up the Scorpion. We get a bit of spotting damage on it. Absolutely lovely. But yeah, I decide, okay, 400 meters of base fuge, 10% camo while I'm moving, 13% on the move. SU-101 is not gonna spot me if I poke for a shot there. So we do get the SU-101 onto a one shot with our heat shells there. Very, very nice. It's gonna be very useful, inhibiting his ability to assert himself over this game. Now wait for a minute for the T95 and then I pull forward. And honestly, I don't like this decision. Moving from there to there, 
What I think I should have done is stayed in this position, which is what I do in a minute. I should have stayed in this position and aimed at that corner for the SU, right? Because staying in that position means that I'll spot the T95 if he comes down, T95, with his lack of flexibility. If I spot him, I can pull forward out of his line of fire and keep aimed on the SU, right? But doing this, pulling out, means that the T95, T95 could potentially have come around that corner and now be aiming down this load. It would be unlikely and very poor timing, very unlucky, but it could happen. It could not have happened if I held this position, held my nerve and just switched my fire to this corner, which is, as far as I remember, that is what I do in a moment. Oh no, I actually... Oh yeah. No, yeah, give me a moment. I'm working it out. Come on, Steve. You're embarrassing me. Come on, aim at the SU, mate. Why are you prioritizing a T95? You're gonna spot the. Oh, I'm a get. T95 gets spotted anyway. I'm aiming at some corpses because I'm a giant goitch. And here we go. Eight rounds per minute are going to serve us well. Beautiful shot into the weak armor. 152 millimeter side plate on the T95 there. Believe it or not, that area where I shot is actually 76 millimeters, I believe. Very American of it. But now, 30 seconds left on the game, and this is pretty much a solid win. And I, uh, 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 right now, I'm just going hunting for this SU-101, who has given up, comes back. Just right at the end, we're able to pick up our fourth kill with, believe it or not, we did get a blind shot at some point. Uh, let's let's look at the battle results and we can delve into that. Okay, so here we are, lovely golden results. When you look at that smorgasbord of tanks that we impacted. And yes, indeed, 4,036 damage. Tier 9 game on Ghost Town. That is not a bad performance whatsoever in the STA 2. 1,717 base XP. That is... Mm. Absolutely gorgeous, well exceeding the base ace tank requirements in this game, no doubt. Also got 2,140 damage upon spotting, no doubt, 400 meters of base view range, helping us out very much with that. Distance tra traveled 20.48, we were pretty much always on the move, looking for a better position in which to contribute. Feel a bit sorry for this T95. He was in a blessed matchup in a blessed map for the tank. We're nearly at the end there, but uh, just wasn't able to compete with our mobility, and neither would I be in his situation against a player who knew what he was doing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, lovely profit as well. 183,000. Spectacular. Okay, people, thank you. Very, very much for watching this rather close game, really exciting game to perform and contribute as nicely as that in a bottom tier vehicle. Hopefully you enjoyed, and until next time, farewell. Strong like a Range Rover, hot like a flamethrower, he'll beat your chief then in the talk, game over. Raping games and KV trains, rushing in and crushing things, he's crushing you and you just got a cross on him. <laughs> From mine to Merlin Ofga, he is a scary spotter, working fancy tanking magic, just like Harry Potter, and well enemies have tendencies to be nothing.